Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity multiplayer tutorial. Today we'll be having a look at how to sync variables between the server and the clients so that a player can select the team they wish to be on, they'll tell the server, and then the server will sync that to all the other clients, even those that join late. Then when the data is synced, an event will be triggered where we can update the colour of the player's mesh renderer. Hope you're looking forward to it, so let's get started. So as always, there'll be links down below in the description to the GitHub for this project if you want to follow along, as well as any relevant pages on the documentation. So I'll quickly go over the setup for this tutorial, then we can get into the coding. So just like in the previous tutorials, I have a bit of UI just to start as a host or a client. So start as host, spawn in our player, we can leave if we want to. And now the only new thing is this bit of UI at the top left for selecting the team that you wish to be on. If we have a look at the script, I have the team picker script which is just a mono behavior with a public void that takes in an integer for the team. And this is the team index. So if we go back here, red is zero, green is one, blue is two, and pink is three. So if we look over here in the UI, you see here, I've got a different image for each one. And whenever I click on them, so I'm using the Unity event trigger component, when my pointer clicks on that image, it will set the team index as zero or one, two, and three. And then in the team player script, we simply have at the moment a mono behavior with reference to the team color renderer and an array of team colors. Back into Unity, if we look at the player, the renderer is this object. And if I change the color of it, you can see here, this is the renderer to change the color of the player. And then we also have the array of the different team colors that can be selected. And that's it for the setup. So let's get into making this work. So let's start off in the team picker script. And we already have the UI with the four different team colors. And when we click on them, it will call this method with the index for that team color. And we now need to take this and send it to the server and say, hey, I wish to be on this team now. So we need to somehow get reference to our own player's team player component. And we know that this is on the player prefab and the network manager keeps track of all the player prefabs. So we need to somehow get from the network manager our own player's prefab. So to do that, let's get our own player's ID. So network manager dot singleton and we can grab the local client ID and let's store it in a variable and it's a ulong so ulong local client ID equals and now that we've got this we can tell the network manager please get us the client with this ID so to do that we need to say if and the reason it's an if is because if it fails to find one with the ID then it will return false and if it succeeds it will return true so we'll say if we fail and then network manager dot singleton connected clients. So in the uh, whatever collection type this is, so it's a dictionary. So in this dictionary, we want to try and get the value for this ID, local client ID. And if we do get it, it will pass out here. So use the keyword out a network client and we'll just call it network client. And like I said, it's an if not, because if it fails to find a client with this ID, then return. And then down below, if this is successful and we do find our client, we then want to get our player object. So network client dot player object. And we know on our player object, we have that component, the team player component. So try get component team player. And this will pass out the actual component reference if it finds it. So out team player, and we'll call the variable team player. And yet again, this is a try get, so it's going to uh, return a boolean. So if not, this means if we somehow fail to get this component, then simply return again. And then now at the bottom, we have successfully got reference to our own team player component. And we now want to send an RPC, like in the previous tutorial, to the server. So let's make that. So go into the team player script, and we need to make a server RPC. So server RPC attribute needs to be a public method, public void, and we'll call it set team server RPC. And with this, we need to take in the index of the team they want to be on. And we could go with an integer, but we're only going to have four teams and integers store a lot of data for what we need. We only need a very, very small amount of data. So we can actually just use a byte instead, which means less data being sent over the network, just makes everything faster and more efficient. We'll call this the new team index and now we can call this from the team picker so back over here we now just need to say on the team player component call the set team server rpc method 
passing in this new team index. Now we have it as an integer, but it wants it as a byte. So we'll just convert it to a byte by casting it. So byte inside of brackets, and then the variable team index. So now that this script is done, I've added in some comments. So the first step, like I say, get the local client's ID. And then with that, we'll ask the network manager to try and find the local client object with that ID. And if unsuccessful, we just would simply return. Then for that client, we say, go to their player object and try and get the team player component off of it. And if unsuccessful, simply return. And finally, if everything is successful and we get reference to the team player, we can then call the RPC, the server RPC. So this is a method that's executed on the server side. And we just pass in the index for the team we want to be on. So that sends a message to the server. And by default, uh, this is protected so that only the owner can do this. So I can't change your team for you. I can only change my own team. Now over in the team player script, on the server side, we're receiving the index for a team that the player wants to be on. And we know that the only valid indices are 0, 1, 2, and 3. But they could quite easily pass in 4, 5, 6, 7, whatever. So we need to make sure that it's valid. So we'll say here, if the new team index is greater than 3, then return because it can be one two or three but if it's bigger than three then it's wrong and it can't be less than zero because a byte's minimum value is zero so this will work and now that we've made sure it's a valid team index we want to store it but if we just go for a normal private byte team index and then we just set that so team index equals new team index all that will happen is an integer, or sorry, a byte, will be updated on the server side and that's it. Nothing will happen. No colors will change. No clients will even be aware of this. So we need to somehow sync this to all the clients, even ones who join late. So what we actually need is something called a network variable, which allows us to sync data between the server and the clients and vice versa. You can do it any way you like. And to do this, we want to change the data type to a network variable. Now, if you look here, there is a generic type with angle brackets, and then there are already some pre-made types they've made for us for all the common things like bool byte, color, so on, vectors down here as well. Now we're using byte, so we'll just use the network variable byte. You can, if you want, make your own implementations for data types that don't exist in here. There's more on that on the documentation, but that would be a topic for a different tutorial. And now we need to initialize this variable. So equals new network variable byte, and there are different parameters. You could leave it blank. You could pass in some settings, which I'll show you in a minute, a default value or settings and a default value. Now for the settings, if I pass in a new network variable settings object, I'll hit F12 on it and we can have a look. You can change the read and write permissions. So you can make it so that uh, only certain clients can read the data. Only certain clients can write the data. Only the server can write the data, various different things like that. You can also change uh, how frequently the data is synced. So you could make it very infrequent or you could just leave it as the default and so on and so forth. Now, we don't want to go too in depth into this. There's obviously more on the documentation. In our case, we like the default settings because we want the default to be zero. So you could just pass in zero or leave it blank. And the permissions are good by default, which means only the server can set it and any clients can read it. And now we just need to edit our code down here. We can't set the team index to a byte because it's this other object, a network variable byte. However, we can set the team index's value to the new team index. And now this is working as a client. I can click on the bit of UI, send an RPC to the server. The server will check if it's a valid ID, and then it will update the synced variable and all the other clients will see that change. But currently we don't actually do anything when that change happens. So to do something when it happens, we want to use Unity's built-in on enable and on disable callbacks. And inside of here, we want to subscribe. So team index dot on value change. So network variables have an event that's triggered for you whenever the value changes. So we can say when it changes, call another method. And we can say over here, team index dot on value change minus equals to unsubscribe and then we just need a method so we'll call it on team change and then we'll make that method so private void on team changed and you have to pass in here uh, two of the same data type that you're syncing so byte old team index and byte new team index 
So all we want to do in here is change the renderer material color. And only clients need to see that because the server, if it's just running as a standalone server, doesn't actually need to even render anything. So we can say here, if we're not a client, then return. But to check if we're not a client, we actually need to inherit from network behavior. And that's also required for the network variable syncing to work. So make sure you are inheriting from network behavior. And then down here, we'll say if we're not a client, so if not is client, then return. But if we are a client, we need to finally update the renderer. So we can say team color renderer dot material, which will get the first material found. And we can set the color. So we need to pass in the string. Now I'm using the universal render pipeline, I think. So the way to do this is by passing in underscore base color, but it has to be without a U because it's the American way. I tend to call my variables uh, the British way with a U, but that's just preference. And then the second parameter is which color to use. Now we have an index and we also have an array of colors. So we can just say team colors and then pass in the new team index like this. So now we're done with the coding and I've added some comments to help make it easier to understand what's going on. So when the server receives the new team index, make sure it's valid if it's not return. Update the variable and on enable and disable is when we will start and stop listening for the team index being updated. And then when it is updated on team changed gets called, which first of all checks if we're a client, because if we're not a client, we don't care. But if we are a client, we'd like to update the material color for the player's renderer. And with this, we'll head back into Unity, let it compile, and then we'll go and do a build. So now the build is done, let's host, join as a client, join as a client. And as player one, I'm going to pick the blue team. And notice how when I pick blue, it syncs it to everyone and updates. And over here, I will pick green. And on player three, I'll pick blue or pink or red. You see it working in real time as I change the different values. And if I was to leave, as player three and join back as player three, notice how I see the colors of player one and two. Even though those variables were changed while I wasn't connected, it still syncs it to me as a late joining client. And then I can pick and everything works just fine. So there we have it. That's it for this tutorial. You now know how to sync variables between the server and the clients in your Unity multiplayer game. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know down below what you want to see next. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Francisco Lira, Liz Kimber, Sahaila, Birdodai, Kat from Garfield, David McDermott, Evan Maxi, Yaris Letter, Casey, Katinka Mom, Lawrence Simpson, Melvin, Mike Troop, Rack, Sam Marcus, Ulfgrim, Andrew, Chris Diplock, Fury, and Dario. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to the Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.